Uh, the great influence of a book written by John Barry had a couple interesting points. There were a lot of cases of schizophrenia post-flu, and a lot of people thought the flu could affect the mind, and some of these people got made recoveries. So there was something that could have caused inflammation to the brain. And one of the treatments in that time was using salicylates. And there's some description of cases of Ray syndrome, which we know was caused by, or at least we think it's caused by aspirin. So maybe that was a great experiment to tell you that maybe salicylates should not be used if you have a flu epidemic. Is that true? No, it's very true. Salicylates, specifically aspirin, are contraindicated, are clearly not indicated in patients who have the flu or flu-like symptoms. We feel that the exposure of patients with the flu to aspirin specifically increases the risk of certain neurologic inflammatory processes which can be very severe and very debilitating for the patient. They were also using opiates which are good for pain but it also could interfere your ability the brain to let, tell you to breathe and maybe that was a danger too? Absolutely. Anything that would slow your breathing pattern would be especially dangerous in a person who had a respiratory infection such as influenza. What the flu epidemic of 1918 taught us is that it's very easy to be misled that the symptoms that we're seeing are being caused by a specific disease when it may actually be the treatment of the disease or the interaction between the treatment and the disease itself that's leading to some of the symptoms that we see. Another treatment that was commonly used was these irritating powders you're supposed to breathe in. It caused you to create more mucus and it would blow out the virus out of your system. Well, we actually used something they call saline washes. So maybe they would use the wrong thing, but salt water washes actually are pretty good, aren't they? Well, keeping the secretions thin and loose is really the key element in that mix because when you have the influenza virus, or any respiratory infection for that matter, the, the mucus that we have in our lungs increases in volume and tends to get thicker and dried out. And as it gets thicker, it blocks areas of the lung, and that is what sets us up to develop pneumonia as a more serious secondary infection. So keeping those secretions lice and loose with ways of adding extra water to the lungs with inhalation treatments and with saline washes can be an effective way of helping prevent more serious lower airway infections such as pneumonia.